and welcome back to the third person shooter tutorial series in this one we're going to refactor our code a little bit so that we have a parent sandbox character a player class and an enemy class so that we can start adding enemies to our project that all share the same sort of movement and use gas movement without having to do too much work so this is just a precursor but by the end of this you should be able to have an enemy that follows you like this guy and does parkour around objects as well. If you have any questions at all, then I've dropped the Discord below. There's also a roadmap below with what we're planning on doing with the project and where it's gonna go. So I hope you enjoy this and I hope you have a nice day. Thank you very much. So what we're gonna do is in our content, in our blueprints here, the CBP sandbox character, I'm just gonna right click it and I'm gonna create a child blueprint class. And this will actually be our CBP player if we open up the sandbox so we're going to select spring arm camera gameplay camera control c them and then delete them and then we're going to go back to cvp player compile it and control v them to assign them again and then we're going to put the gameplay camera under the mesh so everything is as it was we'll compile that and compile the sandbox character and then that will freak out in this setup camera part here so we're going to get the setup camera function we're going to copy it and we're going to paste that into our functions and then this gameplay camera goes into the target here and then this camera first off we need to slot it to the spring arm and secondly the camera goes to target just here that will compile fine and then we can delete the setup camera function from the sandbox character. Because also if we go to event graph, we need right at the top, this setup camera and setup input. So all of this event possessed, we're just going to select it, control exit, go to CBV player, go to the event graph, control V it. We'll say do nothing on both of those. And then we'll just right click to refresh both of them. Setup camera might be a bit funky. Might just need to drag out the new one that we've set up. There we go. Compile that. And now if we go to default level, we can go to world settings. And inside selected game mode, I can choose CVP player, press play. And the camera's a little bit high, but we can sort that. We should still be able to do everything that we've been able to do. So we'll set the gameplay camera and we'll just sort that by just dragging that down a little bit. Pile and save that. Back in the sandbox character. There's a couple of bits that I will want to do. So all of this jump logic is fine because we want the enemies to be able to do this as well. Stuff like walk here. Well, if I want the enemy to trigger walk, I'm not going to do a great job of being able to do that. So we're going to do a custom event here. We're going to add a custom event and this will be the walk event. And then I'm just going to plug that into this branch just here. And then I want to call walk event from I walk just make sure it's disconnected so this event here is basically for the player and this one is for our enemy and the same for sprint just a custom event this will be our sprint event we'll put once to sprint into here and connect this top node to the set and then from the triggered we'll get our sprint event and connect with the action value here Jumps a bit more complicated because it has two triggers. So custom event again, and we want the jump trig event. And we'll press control and move trigger down to jump trig. And then another custom event. So we'll add a custom event and this will be the jump started event. We'll connect that up and on triggered. We call the jump 
Trigger event. And start we'll call the jump. Started event. Which means now this is our player stuff. This is our enemy stuff. So we should be able to activate their traversals in a second. Same for crouch. Custom event. We'll call this the crouch event. And then we'll get IE crouch and call crouch event. Same for custom event, the strafe. What was the strafe event? Now you can just leave these all connected like this, that's fine. But I like to have them separate. So if I want to move all of this stuff to like a player controller or just directly into my player, I can do. And again, custom event, the aim. So aim event. And this time this one needs an action value to be plugged in. We want aim event here. We'll connect all this up. Now this one for the swap camera styles is a little bit different. I don't actually plan on using this, but I will control exit move it into CVP camera, CVP player, sorry. And compile that. And that way it's out of here. Because our main parent class of sandbox character doesn't have a camera because enemies aren't going to have a camera. So they're not going to be bothered. The rest of the code for interactions and everything can stay in here. That's not a problem because our fire event will have set up. So we could just do a new setup here. So for fire, we want a new custom event. This will be our fire event trig. We'll call fire event trig from here. And then we'll do another custom event. Custom event. This will be the stop fire event. Plug that in here. Then when we call stop fire event, it'll do it from cancelled and completed. And if you want your enemies to be able to swap to sidearms, then we can sell events on this as well. And the same for reloading. So now when we play, camera angle's all fine. Pick up a gun, fine. Shoot it, all fine. So everything stays the same like that. But now, this sandbox character, I can right click and create a child blueprint of this. And this will be our CBP. NPC. So we do already have an NPC set up. So if I go to content, EPS system, go to blueprints. I've got this base NPC. This is more like a base NPC interactable. Whereas the other one's going to be a base NPC that just walks around or like gets shot and stuff like an enemy. So back to blueprints to be base NPC enemy. And then what we can do here is pretty cool. So we can get this. And then we can put a box collision on the front of it. So we attach this to the mesh. Put this here. Then we'll shrink this. Okay. And if we're in the event graph, when this box overlaps, so add an event on component an overlap and then we'll call jump trigger event so what we'll do is we'll do a really simple custom event 
just so I can show you this working. And this will be moved to layer. So we can just get AI move to. Born will be self. Target at will be get player character. And then on fail, we'll just do a little delay and put it back into AI move to and on success, we'll do a delay one second, put it back. I want to move both of them one second. We can tidy that up by just calling move to player. That makes it a bit tidier. There we go. So now in NPC enemy, we're going to just go to the details for the class defaults and we're going to change a couple of bits, type in AI. And we're going to make sure that auto possessed is placed in world or spawn. AI controller class is perfectly fine for the time being. We are going to make some much smarter AI, but for now, we're just going to get a nav mesh. We're going to press P to see the green bit. We expand it out and we can press P to see the green bit and that's all fine. Then we're going to get our NPC enemy and I'm just going to place him just here. Silly thing called what to do on begin play. So on begin play, we're going to then call move to player. See, it gets up there perfectly fine and follows our player. It does a little bit of a weird uh, movement stuff. So we can go back to our enemy, go to the character movement and whoa, what's it called? Acceleration. Use acceleration for paths. And that should fix that. So if we go play from here, it should do a better job now. There we go. Right, enemy following us and doing parkour over objects as well. So we'll stop that. So anything that's specific to the player when we set up a hood with our health bar and stuff in, then that'll all be here ready to go on our player as well, which is what we want. Anything player specific will now go in the player. Anything that both of them can share will go in the sandbox character. We have a basic enemy. It can do basic movement and we've implemented the parkour on our enemy as well. So we'll move on to the next one where we set up some shared attributes and some health and get the enemy a little bit more grounded, get a custom character going as well.